All right, in this video, we're going to start looking at some trigonometric substitutions. Um, and I've got kind of the different substitutions we use based on the form of the uh, quadratic that's underneath the radical. So in this case, we have the integral of 1 over the square root of x squared minus 4. So to get started on this, again, I just sort of, you know, the first thing I see, if I just solve this problem, you know, sort of uh, out of context of this section. You know, the first thing I would think is maybe does a u substitution work, but again, there's no x left over in the numerator, so I think a u substitution won't work. But to get rid of these uh, uh, quadratics underneath radicals, we can just use our substitutions. So notice we kind of have like the last example. We have a uh, variable squared minus a number squared. So it says whatever number is being squared we use x equals that number times secant theta. So you can think about 4 as being 2 squared. So we're going to let x equal 2 secant theta. Um, dx is going to be, well, the derivative of secant theta is secant theta tangent theta d theta. So we're going to plug all of this stuff in. So um, again, our dx is 2 secant theta tangent theta. I'm going to stick that in the numerator, actually. So there's uh, 2 secant theta times tangent theta uh, d theta. In the denominator, we would have uh, 2 secant theta squared minus 4. So OK, so uh, 2 secant theta times tangent theta and notice underneath the radical, we would have 4 times secant squared uh, theta minus 4. We could just factor the 4 out of there. So again, we would have 4 secant squared theta minus 4. If we pull the 4 out, we'll have secant squared theta minus 1 left over. But the point of uh, doing this, recall that 1 plus tangent squared theta, that equals secant squared theta. So equivalently, if we subtract 1, we'll get that tangent squared theta e equals secant squared theta minus 1. So that's what we're going to do. Uh, we're going to plug in, for the secant squared theta minus 1, we're going to plug in the tangent squared theta. So that's going to be our next step here. All right, so let's see. We've got... 2 secant theta times tangent theta in the numerator. The square root of 4 is just 2. Then we would have the square root of tangent squared theta. But tangent squared theta, this is really just the same thing as tangent of theta. So the square root of tangent squared. So really we can cancel out the, the tangent theta with the tangent theta in the numerator. The 2's also would cancel out. So really, we're just left with the integral of secant theta d theta. But I believe we've seen a nice little formula for the antiderivative of secant theta. That's the natural logarithm of secant theta plus tangent theta plus c. And we've now almost got our antiderivative. Um, we now have to go back to our original substitution. So it says x equals 2 secant theta. Well, if we divide by 2, we'll get x over 2 equals secant theta. So I can substitute that in. We'll have the natural logarithm of secant theta, again, which is x over 2, plus tangent theta. But we don't have an expression for tangent theta yet, but this is where we do our little right triangle. So let's see. Um, secant is 1 over cosine. Cosine is equal to the adjacent over the hypotenuse. So that means secant of theta is going to be the, the ratio of the hypotenuse to the adjacent. So that means the hypotenuse would have uh, a length of x, and the adjacent side would be 2. And now we can do Pythagorean theorem to figure out the missing side. So it says 2 squared plus the missing side squared. That's going to equal x squared. And well, this will be x squared if we subtract uh, the 4 over. And then we'll take the square root of that, and that'll give us our missing side. 
So it says the missing side is just going to be the square root of x squared minus 4. And again, the reason we do that is because now we can read off tangent of theta. So tangent is going to be the opposite side. So the square root of x squared minus 4 over the adjacent side, which is 2. And we now have our antiderivative.